why I decided this was the look. Man, I got leopard everything or whatever. I don't know the difference in leopard and cheetah. But I've got it. <laughs> Welcome to our Mick world. Mallory. Courtney. It's time for another episode of Books on the Rocks. Books on the rocks even though it's not it's wine but. yeah so this is our series if you don't know where um, we make ourselves a drink of some sort and we talk about a book we drink and we know things yeah so today we are talking about we're gonna be talking about the guest list by Lucy Foley so <laughs> there you go it's on uh, Reese's or in part of Reese's book club, which is kind of how I guess we heard of it. Yes. And we're drinking this. So we got a box of wine from like a Wall Street Journal thing. And you get a subscription where they send you wine every, I don't know. So often. Every so often. <laughs> So we got 12 wines, I think. Yeah. And we're going to start trying them today. So the first one we picked out for this, it's called Crab and Soul. And it's from Monterey County, California. And it's a Pinot Blanc. I don't know that we've ever had a Pinot Blanc. Yeah. So we'll see how it is. It says that it goes perfectly with seafood and it's about, you know, and Monterey County is kind of on the coast and the setting for Big Little Lies, which Reese Witherspoon is in. Did we plan that or did I figure it out just now? You'll never know. So anyway, <laughs> now we're going to try this wine. Also, they sent us these little glasses. Yeah. We've been chilling the wine. A, because, you know, it's a white and B, because... We like everything chilled. <laughs> yeah. As you know, if you've been here before and watched us drink wine you of know. any description. So I like the chill. So let's see how this is. It kind of smells lemony, which I guess makes sense to go with seafood. It's sweeter than I was expecting. Hmm. Like, it's not sweet, yeah. but... No. It is... Yeah. It has a little bit of a... Something on the back end that's like... Yeah, I feel like I mean, it's I can got, taste the grapes. Yeah. In it. It's got a tart opening... And then I feel like it gets really smooth. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of a tart kick at the end. Yeah. If I ate seafood, I bet this would go good <laughs> with it. I can eat this with some nice shrimp pasta. Maybe some light fish. Yeah. I like white fish. It does give, it does kind of smell kind of lemony. To me, which of course, you know, you squeeze lemon on lots of seafood dishes. Yeah. So I do know yeah. what a lot it's of seafood taste like. I just don't like them. So anyway. <laughs> so let's kick this off. So of course, as per the use, nope. we'll start with kind of the overall as much as we can do without giving anything away. And then we'll dive into it pretty deep. Yeah. And say what... I guess we could give our overall rating. Yeah. For me, I would probably rate it maybe a 3.5. Out of 5? Out of 5. Um, I'd probably give it like a... Maybe like a 4 out of 5. Um, we did find it because of Reese... Reese's book club because I follow that Instagram and I've read a lot well 
I don't know if I've read a lot of books in the book club, but I always look at them anyway. And the ones I have read were very good. And this one seems like it has a cool premise. Mm -hmm. Um, So, overall, I really did like it and would recommend it, though. I liked it okay. (laughs) There were parts I liked and parts I didn't. Yeah. Which we could talk about later, but... Mm -hmm. Overall, it's basically, it takes place over a wedding weekend. Mm -hmm. So, this couple's getting married, and you follow five characters from their sort of point of view Mm -hmm. um, arriving. So, you follow the bride, um, you follow uh, the bridesmaid, you follow the best man, the wedding planner, and then the plus one who is the wife of one of the honorary bridesmen yeah i guess as they come to this remote island off the coast of ireland Mm -hmm. for for this wedding so all a lot of the people in the wedding party arrive like the day before yeah the wedding which is kind of when this starts yeah so the story the book weaves all these stories kind of in together and we'll get of course we'll dive pretty deep into that but you have a running theme of what's going on on the wedding night that's told from a third person perspective and then you have these five other stories Mm -hmm. that are told first person and then you know they're kind of like Le- all leading up to so that you know the book's gonna kind of bring everything together at the end yeah kind of a thing and it's a mystery yeah it is a mystery i guess i guess you could say it's um well the back of the book even says all these people have secrets but one of them's a murderer right so you figure out pretty early on in the book that somebody gets murdered yeah <laughs> but you don't know who and obviously, you don't know who did it. Right. Yeah. So that's what you're kind of trying to figure out throughout the book. Yeah. Um, so I did like the mystery element of it. I liked the, or at least parts of it. Mm-hmm. I liked the way it ended up, um, how everything ended up connected Yeah. and everything. I liked the way it came together. I thought it was written well. I, however... Did not like most of the characters at all and it was really hard to root for people or to not root against people yeah <laughs> and i know it's supposed to be more of like a realist type of like these people have real problems and mm-hmm. you know so i i liked it but i guess i didn't even though i know and things, not all characters are likable. Mm-hmm. And that's what you expect, I guess. But overall, I just can't find it in me to give it more than a 3.5. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I have no desire to read it again, which like most mysteries, once you've read it, you've read it. Right. But I don't know. That's how yeah. I kind of feel about it overall. The chapters were really short, which I always appreciate because it does keep you reading. Mm-hmm. And then it also helped with this book especially because you didn't have to spend any time with any one character for too long um actually in the back of the book i don't know if you noticed but there's like notes for if you want to talk about this in a book club or whatever and one of the things is called writing characters you love to hate oh yeah so clearly she did that deliberate yeah um so um I yeah I I liked it a little bit more than I think Mallory did but I would recommend that you read it I think it's it's not that hard of a read and it does keep you going so yeah. it is intriguing it's, yeah it's worth a I think it's worth a read yeah for the mystery element yeah. you just have to get past some of the people yeah <laughs> or most of the people in my opinion. So, I think that's kind of the overall view. So, now we'll dive deeper into it. So, if you want to go read it yourself, stop here and pick back up after you've read the book. 
Because from here on out, everything's going to be fair game and spoiler city. Yes. So, um, go ahead. The way I've organized my notes is by character. And then I just made a few other notes. Mm-hmm. So, I've remembered to mention things. Okay. But I guess first, so I made notes of some, like the island. I don't know if it, you know... Um, Ennis and Amplora. Yeah. I'm assuming that's what they called the island. So that, I guess for the setting. Mm-hmm. So I like the setting of this. Yeah. Because it was, it was on this remote island, but it was set to be like this really pretty place, but also creepy. Yeah. Which is something I think is cool, especially for the setting of a mystery. Yeah. Because you can only get there by boat. Right. And you find out in the present day, like at the wedding reception or whatever, that there's been a storm or there is a storm. And that just makes it creepier Creepier that there's a storm when there's something crazy happening. The like lights a murder. keep going on and off and yeah. the wind's whipping. And it, it kind of seems like where most of the structures are and the events of the book are actually, I guess to me, I kind of picture like an island but that's kind of more like the devil's tower Mm -hmm. because it seems like everything is on top because there's all these cliffs yeah like the stuff's up here and then the cliffs lead down to the beach yes and that makes me and of course that adds to the drama and the danger yeah but it makes me think you know like here's all this stuff up here and then it's like you know where Mm -hmm. you can and then of course there's also these peat bogs that you can just fall into like quicksand yeah if you're not paying attention yeah and there's caves yes there's a cave and i think it reminded me of um oh my gosh what was that it just left my brain um oh it reminded me of lock and key which i don't think you've watched on Mm -hmm. netflix where there's like a cave but at certain times of day, you know, when the tide is in or whatever, it fills with water. Right. So you have to be careful going into the cave at certain times, which the, the theme of water kind of goes throughout. Yeah. And some different things related to that mm-hmm. of the tide and coming in and people nearly drowning and all this stuff right. kind of plays throughout the, the yeah. book. Yeah, that and the color red. Because I think when you're reading the book, every at least in my mind, what I could picture, everything was very shades of grays and greens and like not bright greens, just like mossy green and like pale yeah. blue and, you know, like a very, um, if you've ever watched CSI New York, the CSI shows, if you ever actually watch them and notice this, they all have a a defined color scheme representative of where they're set. So Mm -hmm. CSI Miami is very vibrant. Everybody wears bright clothes. The show is always in warm tones. Mm -hmm. CSI New York is always in very cold tones. Everybody dresses in grays and blacks. Yeah. Um, So this was a cold tone. All the whole setting was a cold tone. But then like the wedding cake was red velvet and like they would talk about how bright the blood was in yeah. certain scenes or you know they would talk about you know like when they were butchering the like the racks of lamb or whatever how the bright the blood was so yeah. it's like it stands out against the rest of the, yeah the vibe yeah the and then also they keep they keep reinforcing throughout the book how the people on the mainland think the island is haunted. Mm-hmm. And other people think that like... And other people throughout the book reference ghosts. Yeah. So you're never really quite sure throughout the book if there is a haunting element or not. Yeah. Which I like because I like scary stuff. And of course I like suspense and mystery so that i liked how that added to it yeah the place yeah so i don't know do we want to go down the line by character that's fine and kind of well first of all the supporting 
I guess the supporting characters. Mm-hmm. All right, so first, the groomsmen. Yeah. All right. So, Femi, Angus, and Duncan were their names. And Pete. They were the worst. They yes. were so obnoxious. They were like 30-year-old, 30 30-something-year-old 30 frat boys. Basically. Like yep. your stereotypical frat boy. I just thought, oh my God. Like, I cannot handle the way that these they're acting right now. <laughs> yeah, Pete was evidently a coke kid because honestly... Spoiler alert, at the end of the book, they lost Pete, and I don't think they ever found him. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. Really, did they ever find Pete? I don't think they did. I don't know if they did, yeah. Because he wandered off from the group. Because the, the, yeah. the four of them were the ones wandering around. Right. Because, like, at the first, you know, they're at this reception. Everybody's like, oh, because the power keeps going off. The wind mm-hmm. is blowing. And then this... Me- um, server right. yeah waitress comes in and she's screaming because she, she said she's seen a body right. so the four of these losers go out <laughs> and so throughout the book you flash back to them or flash forward to them right. looking for something because see for about two or three goes of the wedding night you know this has happened you do you have no idea at all who is dead mm-hmm. until these people go out looking and then you realize at least the four of them are alive and yeah. you don't know about anybody else. They don't mention any of the other characters, I think deliberately. Right. Like you don't see them in the future yeah. part or the present day part or whatever because they yeah. don't want you to know who they're going to find. Yeah. If anybody, which they do find somebody right. eventually. But I kept thinking they were going to fall into that... Um, bog thing or whatever Pete may have he may have because i think he disappeared from the group and yeah i'm really now that i'm thinking about that because he disappears and they don't find him and then the whole climax of the book happens and it's over yeah and like now i'm just thinking they never did find pete (laughs) yeah So, so i'm not really that sad about it honestly all of them were so terrible yeah, Pete had, like, brought all these, like, prescription, probably, and non-prescription drugs to the wedding. And, and I, I mean, the whole deal is, like, if you've seen the show Upload on Amazon, then, apart from the fact that she's brunette and described as being, you know, pretty pale-complected pale and brunette, Jules so much reminds me of Robbie Amell's girlfriend in that show. Like, keeping up with the Joneses, she is the Joneses. Yeah. And, you know, just like prim and proper and everything needs to be a certain way and everything needs to go exactly to plan. And, you know, we'll dive more into Jules. But, so then the fact that these idiots are here is like, what even? Yeah. It's like they exist to annoy Jules and me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I thought, I don't know, I guess it's kind of like when they were talking about the stag, yeah, the bachelor party, that they, I could understand more acting a fool, maybe. Yeah. But at the rehearsal dinner, yeah, I just, I don't know, the, they were like doing these chants and banging and like, I'm Breaking like, stuff. Hannah, who was like, I'm a little bit concerned. I was like, me too. Me too. I'd be like, peace out. I'm getting out of here. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. I, I guess that was their purpose. It really was to be, really just be annoying. Like, yeah. And, <clears throat> it's one of those things because also we've been watching you intermittently the last the most recent season which is season three and of course there's an episode if you watched it where joe goes out into the woods with his newfound friends basically people that live in the same subdivision as him (laughs) and and i have always i like one of my fears is mob mentality yeah. And it even mentions this in the book that they seem, Hannah mentions, yeah. that they seem like they have a pack mentality, like a wolf pack mentality. And like, that's the kind of thing that when people have that and they're already kind of 
Yeah. A little bit off. They get drunk or high. Yeah. Like it makes it so much scarier to me. Yes. Because it's too unpredictable. And then also, not only are you going to have one person being unpredictable, you're going to have like six. Yeah. A bunch of them. Yeah. And they're kind of very inconsiderate. Yes. Like they don't treat anybody. Like they treat almost every other character except Will terribly. Right. They treat Jono. They always have, I guess. Yeah. They treat Hannah bad when Charlie. they find her. Yeah. They, you know, and they're just they're disrespectful. Jerks. And like I said, I feel like that was the point of them. Yeah. And honestly, I don't, even though I don't like them, I know you're not, probably not supposed to. Mm-hmm. I don't dislike them as much as I do other characters. True. Because... I think the thing about them is is that that's just how they are and while their behavior is completely unacceptable I don't think they are trying to hurt anybody no and like they're not trying to pretend that they're like these upstanding I never do anything people Mm -hmm. and then they act like this I'm like I feel like this is them like they may not be so crazy all the time but I feel like they're not very different now than they but, always have been. Right. They are who they are. They're not putting on a front or not. Yeah. You know. So yeah. even though that's how they are, it doesn't piss me off as much as some of the other characters <laughs> True. <laughs> did. Yeah. Two in particular. Yeah. So then a couple more of the kind of background characters I'll mention are like the parents. I mean, Will's parents, you hardly enter. Will's the groom. You hardly see them at all. Um, You know, the dad kind of serves just to be as, as sort of this overbearing presence that he's always been because he was also the headmaster of the school that they all went to. Um, but otherwise, you know really nothing about his mom. You really don't learn that much about him. Yeah. And then her parents, Jules's parents, Araminta and Roman, who are sh- divorced. And then there's Severine, who is her stepmom. Yeah. Um, honestly, her dad, I don't know why, because obviously he was kind of a self-made man and, um, you know, made a ma- pretty wealthy and refined, I suppose. But... He kept putting me in mind of Jamie Tarp's dad on Ted Lasso. Yeah. It's kind of like nothing. I don't know. I guess all the parents were supposed to be like... Disapproving. Yeah, like seen in a bad light by the audience of like... They're the reason that their kids are like this. (laughs) Yeah. Even though they weren't in it. Yeah, they weren't in it that much. But right. they all kind of, none of them were seen as like these great people. Right. That we were supposed to think. Yeah. Or at least understand why the characters feel what they do about their parents. Yeah. That they weren't treated the way that they should have been growing up, I guess. Yeah. Jules's mom was evidently an actress and continued to try to be this world famous actress evidently while Jules was a kid and then by the time her stepsister Olivia sorry not stepsister half sister Olivia came along I guess Araminta had decided to become a mom at that point so Olivia kind of got a better childhood than Jules did and Olivia is also the bridesmaid um and so that was kind of you know kind of a piece of that puzzle but yeah, otherwise they didn't really serve a purpose. Yeah. And weren't there that much. Yeah. And I guess that was it, except for, well, Will, who is the groom. Yeah. And then Charlie. Yeah. And Freddie. Um, oh, yeah. Freddie. Freddie is Aoife. Aoife is the wedding planner. Freddie's her husband, and he's just kind of there most of the time. He has a few shining moments or moments of where you're like, oh, what's Freddie up to? But Yeah, um, he just kind of was in and out. And then the only other character that I will mention is Alice, which is Hannah's sister. Because she really was not there because we find out pretty quickly within Hannah's storyline that she killed herself. Yeah. So, um... All right. 
All right, so I guess I guess we can get my super irritation out of the way real okay. quick. So Jules and Charlie are both garbage. And I wish they had both been murdered. Spoiler alert, they weren't. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were, to me, they were the worst people. Because unlike the frat boys, who, like we said, were straight up, both of them were trying to act like, you shouldn't be mad at me because I'm right. And Jules, okay, so first of all, Jules. So I felt like she was self-centered. Liter literally, my note says self-centered garbage. <laughs> yes, it does. So Mom she says Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so I did not like her. Like, she got worse as the story went on for me. Yeah. The more I learned about her, the more I despised her. Okay, so I'm with Hannah all the way, 100%. I'm on Hannah's side. Charlie and Jules can suck it and jump off a cliff. So... Really kind of everybody, to be honest, was at least a little bit garbage, <laughs> except for Hannah and Olivia. Yeah. So. Um, but so Jules, I mean. And Aoife and Freddie, they weren't garbage either. Yeah. Jules is, runs a magazine. And she's like this power woman, you know, girl boss, whatever is how I guess she's first presented. Like yeah. she is, you know, knows what she wants. Kind of a little bit of a bridezilla, maybe, but in the way of it's. Ha I want it to be this way. Yeah. Like it has to be perfect. She's she is a lot about appearances. Mm -hmm. Her and Will look really good together, but she's just so self-centered. Like she acts like she's so mad that Olivia, uh, that Olivia got a better childhood twenty years ago. Yeah, and like Almost. she's. She can't see that Olivia is obviously depressed. Yeah. And she keeps acting like you're being a child. Right. When to everyone else, including Hannah, it's super obvious. Because Hannah actually takes the time to talk to Olivia. Right. And listen to her. And even at the end, when Jules and Olivia kind of... Or she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, if I was Olivia, I'd be like, it's too late. Right. Get out of my life. Okay? Yeah. Um, because I just thought the whole time she was so, it's all about me and my feelings. Yeah. That she didn't really care about her sister. And not to mention the her and Charlie thing. Yeah. So, so, so I don't know why storylines like this make me so mad. <laughs> it's not like anybody's ever cheated on me. <laughs> But when you have, I guess because when you have characters who try to act like they're so high and mighty. Yeah. So we find a full, well, even when Charlie and Hannah first arrive, Jules is immediately like all over Charlie. In front yeah. of Hannah, in front of Will, in front of everybody. Yeah. And we were, we're in Hannah's perspective. So, you know, when you're listening, you know, when she's viewing it. But the more we got into the story, the more I'm like, no, Hannah's freaking right. This yeah. is not an appropriate relationship yeah. that they have. Like, I get men and women can be friends. But even, I mean, most friends don't sit here and put their hand on each other's leg when they're just talking. Right. Like, it's weird. Yeah. This is weird. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> yeah. So, in doing stuff like that, it just seemed like from the beginning, I'm like, red flags here. Yeah. Like, even if nothing has happened. Yeah. Even though anybody with eyes could have thought anything was happening from the jump. Yeah. Because they're supposed to be just friends and they're supposed to have only ever been friends and that's what they've told everybody. Yeah. Which seems, to a certain extent, you kind of have to be like, but are they? Because, yeah, you know. And, like, you start to suspect something has happened because every time somebody, like, one of the frat guys is like, oh, have y'all ever slept together? They don't answer. Right. So then you know for sure they have. But they talk about, like, oh, we met when we were young, and she talks about he was so good looking. And like, yeah. I don't know. They're always telling all this stuff where I'm like, why would you do that in front of somebody's wife? But yeah. it becomes clear that Jules does not care. And it's almost like 
she deliberately excludes Hannah and is mm-hmm. like, I don't know, it's just the way she talks about it throughout that made me say, you're just a trash person. Yeah. Like, why would you keep doing this? Yeah. And then we find <laughs> out, yes, they slept together, but no, it wasn't back in the day when they were, when nope. they met. No, it was after he had married Hannah when she was at home with their newborn baby and postpartum depression, he went out and got drunk and slept with Jules. Yeah. Yeah. GTFO, both of y'all. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and, and you know, he tells Hannah this and rightfully she's upset. Yeah. And thinking all this time y'all been, like, it seems like they've been making her feel like she was crazy for thinking yeah. there was something going on. They're gaslighting her when the whole time. When there was. Yeah. And I'm like, I hate you both. And I hope when y'all get back home, she kicks your ass to the curb. Well, and see, too, the thing about it is, is that Charlie, it's almost like he was in love with Jules, but didn't think... It's kind of like he... It's almost like he didn't think he was good enough for Jules. Because when he's around her, he acts differently. Mm-hmm. Like, he thinks he has to be this certain type of way. And it isn't who he is. I mean, he's a school teacher who lives a modest lifestyle with his wife and kids. Mm-hmm. And they, by all accounts, seem, you know, decently happy. But it's not a great marriage, we understand, from the very beginning. But also, it's like then when he gets around her... He's trying to be all... He's trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. But Hannah isn't like that at all. And then also, it kind of makes you wonder how... It it really made me think, well, he's always wanted Jules, but didn't think he was good enough. Or at least now he doesn't. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe when they were younger, because evidently he's a little bit older than her. Yeah. Maybe she didn't think, or maybe he didn't think that way of her and she wanted to be with him and the the feeling what mutual or whatever but it's almost like now when he's around Jules it seems like he thinks he's settled for the life he has yeah instead of having this life with her and that's just like well first of all that's ridiculous anyway yeah but then also like what the heck and he just is such a whiny baby the whole time yeah he's like, he's so mad because of what happened. Like, he got he went on the stag trip for some reason. Yeah. Which is stupid. I don't know why he did that. And they pulled this prank on him where they play this game. So, the guys back in school play this game, Survival, which is important. Mm-hmm. Where they would take new people to the school, like the new boys, like an all-boys school. And they would take them out somewhere and tie them up and leave them. And they had to find their way back to the school. Yeah. So they did that to him on the strip. And so he's been like so insecure about it this whole time. But I'm like, bro, you are a grown ass man. Right. Get over it. Yeah. Like they pulled a prank on you and now, but it's the same thing. It's like he's just trying so hard to like fit in with these people and he acts like he's embarrassed of Hannah. And I'm like, you suck. I hate you so much. If this was the (laughs) freaking life you wanted, then why didn't you do it? Like grow a pair and do it yeah. like don't cheat on your wife and then be one person here and one person here i can't yeah. friggin' stand that yeah so anyway also my notes about charlie says whiny cheating garbage <laughs> mine says jules best friend <laughs> <laughs> so yes jules and charlie were my least favorite characters in the whole book yeah and that storyline really pissed me off and made me like hannah even more than i already did yeah yeah i mean the whole so so going so also who else was a human piece of garbage was will but you don't know it till the end because spoiler alert he is the victim yeah i feel like it's not hard after a while to figure out he's the victim right because you kind of figure it's not one of the five people yeah. Because they're telling the story. Yeah. And then you know it's not one of the frat dudes. Yeah. So it kind of becomes more obvious that it's going to be him, but you don't know why. Right. Like, until, like, as as the story goes, you figure out 
things he's done. <laughs> yeah. But turns out he may have been the biggest piece of garbage of all. Yeah. I Probably hate not, but he's close. Yeah. But he doesn't seem like it until because see, the thing is is that everybody in addition to recounting the affairs of the lead up to the wedding, they also have some kind of thing from their past. So Hannah, we I mentioned earlier that she had a sister that killed herself. Well, the reason that Alice killed herself was because she had this great career trajectory where she was going to become a politician. So she spent her whole life trying to lead a near flawless life mm -hmm. so that nobody could ever have any dirt on her. Good grades in school, all these extracurriculars, goes to a great college, performs well there. She gets this boyfriend. He doesn't really fit in with her life. She feels like she's not taking her career path as seriously, and she's suffering because of him, so she breaks up with him. But then he gets revenge on her by putting porn of them on the internet, which effectively ruins her whole career trajectory, or at least she thinks it does. Mm -hmm. So she ends up taking her own life over the whole deal. And so, you know, that's kind of that's kind of Hannah's issue that she's <clears throat> dealing with because she's always wondered who it was. And, you know, that's kind of what... Now, so keep in mind, obviously, by me telling this now, you're going to figure out that it is Will, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's obviously Will. But... The thing about it is, is that in the story, you don't have a clue, really, mm -hmm. that it's Will until almost right at the end, because Olivia's backstory is, yeah. she had this long-term boyfriend named Callum, and you think that's the reason she's depressed, right? Because they broke up, they've been together, yeah. she's building a future, and then she br they break up, he breaks up with her because he's wanting to get with one of her friends, so... Then she starts staying at Jules's apartment, and she starts kind of hooking up, you know, trying to find somebody else. And she finds this older guy named Stephen, who's approximately 15 years older than her. Mm -hmm. Now, again, obviously, this ends up being Will, yeah. but you don't know it at the time. And so, the thing about this storyline is, so anyway, she starts dating this Steven guy. She's lying about her name too because she's trying to protect herself, whatever. She meets him. They immediately go back to her apartment, which is Jules's apartment, and have sex. They're, you know, they have basically a sexual relationship, it seems like, for yeah. the most part. And then eventually they go to... Jules's like launch or something, some kind of event that she's having. Yeah. And she le and what's her face? Olivia gets trashed and mm -hmm. has to leave the party. And Stephen is so embarrassed. She thinks anyway. So he puts her in the cab. She like. leaves and he goes back inside. And as it turns out, that's when he met Jules. But say we again. The way the book is written, though, you don't figure you don't it know out. any of this stuff, and you don't figure it out. Because Olivia, for a long time, is just you know something has happened to her, but and she keeps talking about how there was so much blood and all this, but you just don't know what has happened. Yeah, even and for a long time, and then you don't even figure, and then you, the rest of it, I feel like I should have gotten it before I did. Yeah, I didn't get it until they basically told us told me that right. it was him like whenever she he came into the house and she went upstairs and threw up and yeah. she says something in about how she couldn't believe it or something about his face or i don't know and i was like what yeah <laughs> it got me I, and so i didn't figure it out the thing there is though that they also mention in that segment she says how he recovered much faster than she did Mm -hmm. Because that was the first time they'd ever met. But here's my qualm with that. Had he not ever been to Jules's apartment before? Yeah, like would he not have realized he'd been to that apartment? Right. Because he'd clearly been there multiple times with Olivia. Yeah. So maybe, and maybe he recovered much faster because he already knew. But see, then later he says something to the effect to where... 
he acts like he didn't know Olivia was Jules' sister until they met. And I'm like, but you went to her apartment. Yeah. And they make out like it's this really nice, fancy apartment. Mm -hmm. So you really didn't know. Yeah. And he, well, I don't know if you said this already, but the thing was that she got pregnant. Mm Mm-hmm. After he had kind of ditched her. Yeah. And told him, and he was basically like, sure problem. Right. Yeah. I don't want anything to do with it. So she ended up having to have an abortion, which her mom, I don't know if her mom took her or she just knew about it because her mom kept saying when Jules was getting all, like, she was mad at Olivia for not being happy about her wedding. Right. And for not coming to try on bridesmaid dresses, which you find out all of the reasons why she hasn't done that with all of this. Yeah. And her mom's like, you don't know what really happened, so you need to stop. And Jules, of course, was like, no, nah, 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 I'm not going to stop because I'm terrible. Well, <laughs> yeah. That's not what happened. <laughs> to, to Jules's only partial credit, she only knows about Callum. And I yeah. think that she... And I guess from that perspective, if that's the only thing you knew, then you might think like, okay, this moping has gone on long enough if you didn't know yeah. about everything else that happened. But also, she doesn't ask. I mean, it's kind of like... Yeah, I mean, I, I know, know we're in Olivia's head. Right. But when... Uh, and I guess because because Hannah, after she talked to her, was like, I don't think she's okay... And Jules was like, stay out of it, basically, or whatever she said. Right. And I'm like... But she's done literally nothing. If you would actually talk to her without being like a jealous snob... Right. Then maybe, you know, you guys could talk about it. But but yeah, so anyway, Will was terrible. Yeah. (laughs) And so then... And so then the other storyline of Will's was with Jono, his best man... And it's pretty easy to guess their secret. Like, from the beginning, John O keeps saying, we have a secret. And it's pretty easy to guess that they either intentionally or accidentally yeah. killed somebody. But somebody died because of them. Playing survival, probably. Yeah. Now, um, one thing I want to note here is... Uh, this, was, this was my only real primary annoyance with the book. With the way the book was written. It's easier to do this, I feel like, on film or in a TV show is to be like, you know, we have a secret and, you know, that's just like one storyline, so it's just one episode. So, Jono and Will have a secret, whatever. But in this book, they kept... Because you can't reveal the secrets too early, obviously. Got to keep you guessing. And they did. The book did a good job of keeping you guessing. But also, they kept on saying, we have a secret. We yeah. have a secret. I keep his secrets. Like John O in his chapters almost all the way would say, but the history that we have, that's why he keeps picking me. And yeah. then like Olivia, like you said, but there was so much blood. But I can't tell Hannah this part. But this, that, and the, and the same with Aoife in her part. She keeps saying, but my family had happier days until that happened. And then, But yeah. they keep on saying it. It's like... Over and over again is the only thing. Yeah. It's not like a... They mention it like once or... And let it ride. And then you're just now like, okay, what is it? Yeah. It's like they keep on, especially Jono. Yeah. I felt like in Jono's parts it kept saying, but I kept all of Will's secrets. But only he and I had shared this event. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it turned out that they had took a kid out tied him to a railing and Jono of course didn't think about the tide coming in but he thinks Will did think about it. Like knew it was going to happen. And the kid drowned. Because the kid was going to, Will had stolen these test answers. Yeah. And the kid was threatening to turn him in. Right. So Jono thinks he did it on purpose and once we learn all this other stuff about Will we're like maybe he did. Maybe he did. Actually. So um and then, you know, kind of the big thing at the end is that that boy turns out to be Aoife's little brother. Yeah. So that's how... He, and her husband, Freddie, was his roommate. Yeah, that they also were mean to. Yeah. So it's all like every character ends up being connected to Will in one way or another. Right. Um, which is how, like I said, you figure out, even before you know all this, that it's Will's likely the body. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, oh, and also, so the, now Will is famous. He's on a reality show called Survive the Night, mm-hmm. which is essentially survival, but for TV, right? But he and John O pitched the show together. And it turns out that the producers liked them both, but then Will told John O that yeah. they didn't want him to be on the show. And so Will John O spent his whole life thinking, Oh, well they didn't want me, but then he meets one of the producers at the wedding and the guy's like, It's a shame you couldn't do the show too. Yeah. And here John O is, this kind of slobby, slovenly loser that smokes weed all the time. Yeah. You know, that's like not living his best life at all. And could have been yeah. Will, essentially. Could have been doing all this. Yeah. But it's, and it makes it out like, and John O comes to the re- revelation, I think, that really Will didn't even want him to be in the wedding. Right. That he made him the best man, kind of, because John O, I guess John O had thought that they were really best friends and they were really connected and like, yeah. Where all the time Will was just trying to get rid of him. Yeah. Basically. And he was leaving him out of stuff, but lying to him about it. Yeah. So everybody ended up with pretty good motive to kill Will. <laughs> right. By the end of it. Uh, also about Jono, I thought Jono was one of those where he was kind of creepy, especially towards Olivia. Yeah. And he was also not a great person. No. But he was sympathetic. Yeah. Because you still felt bad for him, despite all of that. Despite yeah. what he's done, and how he's kind of weird, and how he's kind of a loser. <laughs> but well, you, you kind of feel like, in a way, I mean, he could have done a lot of things, and he didn't. And that's his fault. Yeah. But also, Will sort of kind of screwed him at almost every turn. Yeah. Especially with the survive the night thing. And see, what what was the difference in Will and Jono was... Will saw something that he probably did on purpose as an accident because he didn't want to believe he had killed this kid, I guess, or else he just didn't care. Mm-hmm. It's really a tough call, honestly. But Jono saw what he definitely did accidentally as something that overwhelmed his life. Yeah, he it, felt guilt about killing that kid forever. It like, ruined his life, and Will acted like it didn't affect him at all. Yeah, because it was just an accident, even though more than likely, Will knew it would happen. Yeah. So you're not sure if Will at the end is kind of a little bit, like, I don't know. Not Will's very charismatic. Like, it's yeah. easy to see how everybody has fallen for all of his yeah. everything. He's very good at charming people. Yeah. So we're not sure if he's like underneath all that. Like he's really kind of... A sadistic psychopath? Yeah. Or if he's just... I don't know. Like it almost makes it out like he is. Like he knows what he's doing kind of. But he's pretending it's nothing. Yeah. And he's getting away with it because he's so charming. I guess that would make him a sociopath. Yeah. So he might... I don't guess know. that's sort of the impression you get, but you're not yeah. really too sure. And then he gets murdered by cake knife. <laughs> yeah, by the cake knife, which is way too sharp than it needs to be for cake, according to Freddie. Yeah. And that's another thing because they, so they leave all these little breadcrumbs. And, you know, by the end, you've established that everybody has the motive and then the lights go out. Yeah. There's like four chapters in a row where it says, like, and then and the, the lights, lights go, go out. So it's who, because Hannah realizes that Will was the one that was responsible for releasing that stuff on her sister because of a conversation she has with somebody else at the Some of the guests at the wedding. wedding. Yeah. And so everybody has, you know. Pieced the puzzle together. Everybody knows what Will has done. And also, Jules, it's noted in the first of the book, this is not something that they mention. They mention it throughout the book but not so much Jules has a very very bad temper that she has learned to control yeah but when she was younger she couldn't and she just breaks stuff and then at one point something goes wrong and she does break something but then she reins it back in and then also just to note her dad is immediately distrustful of Will yeah he doesn't like him which like Charlie doesn't really like him, but you can't really trust that. Right, because you think Charlie's probably in love with Jules. Yeah. 
So, but whenever you have, because like, even Hannah, like, finds Will really charming at right. first. Yeah. Now, Olivia doesn't, but obviously she already knows him, which yeah. we find out. But with him, when like her dad and people like that are kind of like, yeah, and see, Jules writes it off because we, we primarily get her dad's perspective from Jules's perspective. Mm-hmm. And Jules thinks that it's because her dad's a self-made man. Like, he did hard work to make his fortune. Yeah. And he's on, and Will's a reality show star. Yeah. So that's what she writes it off to be. But then, of course, at the end, then you flash back to that and kind of wonder... Yeah. Is that it? Or is he like seeing something everybody else like is he's not? He's not as charmed as all these other people are. Yeah. He kind of sees through it. Maybe. Right. Um, that's really the most about the main characters we've kind of run through. I think Hannah and Olivia, one of the things I liked the most was them, like their conversations. Yeah. Because I felt like they really opened up more because of course Jules and Charlie were too busy stuck up each other's butts the whole time to care about anybody else but like they really bonded yeah and I really like that and that's when we really got to know more about those two characters I think yeah which is one of the reasons they were my favorite characters yeah um so I like that I'm looking at my other notes before we talk about like the end yeah well, in the one part towards the end, Jono convinces when he wants to confront Will at the reception about the reality show thing. Mm-hmm. He get, convinces the other dudes, which isn't that hard, to survival Will because he's never, back in school, he, knew, he was the only one who never had to play survival. Yeah. So they take him and tie him up and put him in that cave. Yeah. To which at first you're like, the water's coming in. Yeah. Is he going to die in this cave? But he right. doesn't. Um, so he does get survivaled finally in yeah. the cave. But. And see, Aoife, even though she's one of the storytellers, one of the five people that we follow, we don't follow her as much as we follow the rest of them. Yeah. And so, and you know, she's the wedding planner and very much seems like the wedding planner throughout the deal. I mean, she's trying to manage these crazy people these drunks and jerks and just trying to do the best that she can and you know because she's been a wedding planner in the past and then she and freddie bought this place and fixed it up and they're wanting to make it into a wedding venue or so it seems so they've given a discount to jules to have the wedding there so she'll feature it on the download which is her paper her magazine because it's like their first event yeah since they've owned the place and renovated it yeah i think that's mainly oh well the one thing um kind of two things i guess but one thing that's kind of important is jules prior to getting here has received a note an anonymous note about how Will's not the man she thinks he is Mm -hmm. and she shouldn't marry him. Yeah. And she's trying to figure out who sent it. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit later, her and Will find all the seaweed in their bed. Yeah. Like the night before the wedding. So Will thinks his friends are pulling a prank. But they all say they didn't do it. Yeah, because they did that at school. Yeah. So a few weird things like that have happened. So we're also trying to figure out who, who's trying to warn Jules. Yeah. Um, which it turns out it was Olivia. Right. Because of all the reasons we already mentioned. Yeah. Um, however, the seaweed, and I guess is there anything else before? Nope. I'm like, we're ready. So it turns out <laughs> the person who left the seaweed was also the killer. Yes. Um, and we actually don't even find out that's the motive we find out like at the very end. at the very end when he's being murdered right before he gets murdered right before he gets murdered the story shifts and will starts telling it so will's perspective comes in in addition to the wedding night perspective yeah and so as it turns out the killer in fact oh wait the groomsmen oh yeah have found the body by this point Mm -hmm. and also they have found Jono 
holding the knife covered in blood. Yes. So the police have been called, or possibly were called earlier. Right. When the lady came in and said, somebody's dead. So, of course, everybody thinks it's Jono. And when the police show up, they actually arrest Jono for the murder. Right. Even though he didn't do it. Nope. And even though he thinks that, he, a part of him thinks he deserves it for what happened to that boy. Yeah. Even though he didn't do it and is now, as of the end of the story, going down for the murder. <laughs> yeah. Because who did do it? None other than Aoife. Wedding planner extraordinaire. Because she planned out this whole damn thing. Yep. Revenge, revenge, revenge. Yes. So, really, when her brother passed away, when her brother was basically murdered, it really kind of ripped her family apart. Mm -hmm. And so then when she found out who Jules was marrying and connected the dots there, and Jules had posted a thing about pitch me your wedding venue on her download thing, Mm -hmm. Aoife was like, oh... So she enters the fray as like a whole coup just to get Will to the island. Now, whether or not she's planning to kill him the whole time, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But she's certainly going to get him there and make him pay somewhat at least for what he did to her brother. Yeah, because the whole discount thing, like it was all part of her plan to get them here. Yeah. And so really this first event, I don't know if she was really planning on having other events at this place. Yeah, well, see, that's what's got me concerned (laughs) because, see, now she's still there with this mortgage, probably, (laughs) on this castle. (laughs) And, I mean, (laughs) she's probably not going to have any events because what are the chances Jules is going to write about this in the thing now? Yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen to her and Freddie and now this real estate they own. They're going to go bankrupt. (laughs) (laughs) This is the lender in me talking. Right. (laughs) I'm like, the whole business is shot to hell (laughs) over this murder (laughs) that she committed. So I guess it's her own fault. Right. Um, (laughs) Maybe more people will come because they're like, ooh, someone was murdered here. Maybe. They could do ghost tours. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, it turns out it was her getting revenge. Like you said, don't know if she was planning to murder him the whole time. Right. But she had the sharp cake knife, and she did. But then yep. what happened was Jono found Will and pulled the knife out, to which he thought later, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Also, if you ever see something sticking in somebody, you should probably not pull it out Do until not the medical pull it professionals out. have arrived. Yeah, you can cause more damage by doing that than just yeah. leaving it in there. <laughs> But then that's why he was covered in blood, obviously, because Will was bleeding and he was trying to... Yeah. Then he was hugging on him because he was clearly dead. And Yep. So anyway, he ended up going down for the murder, I guess. Yeah. And the book kind of ends with... I mean, you find out he going to jail. We're supposed to think Jules and Olivia are starting to get closer. And hannah and charlie are on their way home like they haven't spoken to each other or anything and don't know what's going to happen when they get back home yeah and i don't know really what happened to freddie and what's her face it doesn't really say yeah we don't know they had crippling debt and had to figure (laughs) out how to shift their business model (laughs) (laughs) so that was assuming (laughs) yeah all right I don't know. They could have got a good deal on that castle because it was kind of decrepit. But then how'd they make all the repairs? Yeah. She had made a good bit of money from the previous weddings, maybe. Yeah. There's no way to know. Do they owe a lot of debt? We don't know. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really wrap up. It wasn't a kind of story that, like, wraps up every storyline. And you find out what happens to everybody. Like, Pete. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Is Pete in the Pete? Maybe that was the deal. Because, like, earlier in the book, Hannah had gone walking to try to get cell signal. Because mm-hmm. there was, like, none. And she, like, falls in. And gets quick sanded. Yeah. And some of the frat dudes come and get her out. But they're, like, making fun of her and stuff. Yeah. Which is another reason why I'm like, these guys are the worst. But... The worst. So, I don't know. I don't know what happened. 
Um, at one point, Will was threatening Olivia and grabbed her arm. That Jules saw that, which is when I mean, she's had her doubts since she got the note, but kind of, I feel like when she officially sees him getting man hand, manhandling her sister, and she yeah. kind of overhears some of their conversation about like they were in a relationship before. Yeah. Um, Because Will's been acting like this big hero. Because, like, Olivia at one point walks into the ocean and nearly drowns. And Will saves her. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, you're such a hero. Um, And then Jules is like, you're trying to ruin my wedding. Yeah. Once again, we all already know how I feel about that. Yeah. So, So, I don't know what happens. Except for, too bad Will didn't push Jules and Charlie off the cliff instead. Before he got murdered. Maybe that was all they needed to become better people. At least Jules. Jules did kind of seem to be turning a corner at the end. She had at least acknowledged other people's feelings by the end. Yeah. Now, whether or not Charlie is a good person... I almost feel like... I don't know. It's so hard because, in a way, I feel like Charlie is worse. Because he got married... I mean, I don't know. It kind of almost sounded at one point like she got pregnant and then they got married. Yeah, I think so. And then after she had the baby and she was kind of depressed is when he went off and cheated on her. Yeah. And then, but the fact that I guess when people do stuff like that and then they like lie about it and make you think you're the one who's crazy. Yeah. And now Jules, I mean, Jules is a biatch straight up to Hannah. The whole time. Right. And like you fight like you feel like or learn from Hannah that she's always been like that towards Mm -hmm. Hannah. But it's like she's so jealous of this. And like both of them act like they're just so jealous. But they're not doing anything. Like it just makes me so mad that people like if that's what you want, then why did you even do this like why are you trying to do this life and hurt these people yeah when you could just i don't know just own up to it yeah so i don't know i hope i don't know what i hope happens after everybody left except for i kind of hope charlie got kicked out onto the curb but yeah probably depends on if they needed the income or not (laughs) of course they should have to pay child support yeah See, what did she do? I don't she know. Was like a, I feel like she was like a designer for like market, like something to do with like marketing and logo. Because she was talking to somebody about, at one point, about some kind of oh, designs yeah. or something. Yeah. But well, maybe not. She hadn't been working because she's been taking care of the kids. Yeah. So it'd be like she'd have to get a job again, I guess. Well. Which the kids are a little older, I guess. I don't know. Maybe her and Olivia can become roommates. Maybe, but also Olivia doesn't have a job or prospects because she dropped out of university. Yeah. They're both going to have to get jobs and then they'll be fine. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that was the guest list. Yes. Thanks for tuning in to we this hope you enjoyed long it. video of us talking about this. Yep. Um, so let us know if you've read the book. Hopefully, if you've made it this far in the video, you did read the book and didn't just listen to us blabber on about it. Yeah. Um, so let us know what you thought. Did you hate the characters as bad as Mallory did? Did you try this wine and think it was lemony? Where are you at? Mm-hmm. We recommend this wine with this book. <laughs> <laughs> it goes very well. With suspense and drama. <laughs> yes. So, we have, we've got some other books on the rocks. You can check those out. We have other things that are not books on the rocks, not even close to books on the rocks. Mm-hmm. We have some other ones where we drink it and do stuff, but yeah, not books on the rocks. And stay tuned for more in the future. Yeah. We'll be back. Subscribe below. Let us know some books you're reading, if they're kind of like this or just some ones you like. There's something we should read. Yeah. And then we'll do a Books on the Rocks. And do you have a recommended drink to go with it? Let us know. So, we know for this this book, they drank a lot of champagne and Guinness and, of course, Irish whiskey. But um, we didn't have any of that on hand. We don't really care for Guinness all that much anyway. Mm -mm. We're not real big champagne people, to be honest. Although we are more now than we used to be. 
but and then Irish whiskey we really enjoy with pickle juice but some of us more than others um you you can do it though and I you can have do it. but that's why we went with this other thing but if you're hosting your own book club you might want to put some of those in there actually in the back of the book I think there are some book club questions and things I don't know if they recommend what to drink with it like we are (laughs) so who cares really right but so that's it it's all for now cheers cheers Ugh. I can't drink that.